This is Ian Stark for New Blue. In this edition, we're going to be taking a look at New Blue's Titler plugin. The Titler goes a long way beyond the basic text functionality you'll find in your NLE. It adds some really cool features such as 3D extrusion, keyframe animation, textures, transitions, environment mapping and special effects, all wrapped up in a neat self-contained media generator. In this tutorial, we'll be taking a tour of the user interface and I'll introduce you to some of the tools you'll be using to create your own titles. In follow-up tutorials, we'll look at using preset styles and templates, we'll create a project from scratch, and then we'll explore some of the more advanced features like keyframing, using multiple text objects, shapes, transitions and effects. So let's dive straight in and take a look at the main components of the Titler interface. As you can see, there's a lot here, so some things we'll skip over for now and return to look at in more detail either in this tutorial or in a later one. The Titler interface is made up of four main areas. A menu bar, an edit and preview window, a tabbed area that gives us access to the library and the attributes window where we can adjust any of the parameters of our text objects, and finally a timeline where we can arrange our text blocks, keyframes and transitions across time. The menu bar gives us a file menu where we can create new title of projects, open existing ones and save work in progress and presets. An edit menu which contains all the usual undo, redo, copy, cut and paste commands. A view window which lets us change the background colour of the edit window or sync to our timeline for preview purposes. And finally the help menu and no prizes for guessing what you'll find there. Below and to the right of the menu bar is the edit window. This is where you can directly edit the way your text appears and then preview the results. At the top of the edit window you'll find several familiar text manipulation functions including a font picker, a size adjuster, bold italics and underline switches and buttons for changing justification, kerning and leading. You'll also find a Styles button which opens up the library of presets, effects, animations, transitions and shapes which we'll be looking at in a moment. At the bottom of the edit window is a simple transport bar that lets you play your project. Now that's only going to be useful if your project contains animations, transitions or multiple text objects so we won't be needing it in this tutorial. In the centre of the edit window we have a default block of text. In Titler we call this a paragraph and that's how I'm going to refer to blocks of text from now on as paragraphs. You can have multiple paragraphs in a title of project and each can have its own style, effects, transitions and animations. Now there are several elements to a paragraph. At the moment the entire text is highlighted and this is shown by the blue background and the grey bounding box. If I highlight a portion of the text then any changes I make will only affect that portion Titler is great in that you can change any attributes of the whole paragraph or individual words or even single characters. If you then want to adjust the position of the entire paragraph just single click anywhere in the bounding box and the blue background disappears and the bounding box turns green. That means the whole paragraph is selected and any adjustments you make, such as position or rotation, will take into account and be relative to any changes you've made to individual characters within the paragraph. Let's undo the changes I've made so far and we'll get back to our default text. So now I'd like to explain what these circles and icons are around our paragraph. The circles are actually handles that can be click-dragged to change the scale of the paragraph. If I use a handle on one of the corners, the changes are proportional. But if I use a handle on one of the edges, then the change will only affect the height or the width of the paragraph individually. To the right of the paragraph are two icons, the top one being for rotation along the z-axis. Just click and drag. Beneath that is the globe icon. And clicking on the globe icon brings up a ring around your paragraph and dragging around inside the ring rotates your text in 3D along any axis. It takes a minute or two to get used to it but I find it's a great way to make course adjustments that we can fine-tune later. When you're done, click outside the ring. 
One final function to mention is the positioning tool. Just hover over any of the straight edges of the green bounding box and the mouse pointer turns into a four-headed arrow. Now you can click and drag the paragraph anywhere around the screen. To the left of the edit window is a tabbed area with two sections, Library and Attributes. The Attributes tab gives you a further four screens where you can adjust any or all of the parameters for your paragraph. Firstly, let's look at the Object tab. We've already seen how we can adjust the position, the rotation and scale by directly working on the paragraph in the edit window. Well, here we can make fine adjustments to all of those parameters, either by double-clicking and entering a new value, or by click-dragging the slider. You can enter negative or positive values, bring a new value, or by click-dragging the slider. You can enter negative or positive values for position and rotation, and for scale, you can have values from 0 to 10 times the original size in the X or Y direction. The Z scale will only have an effect if you're using 3D text with an extrusion. Just before we leave the object screen, I'd like to show you one further feature that makes Titler a very powerful tool indeed. If I click the Turn On Keyframing checkbox, it brings up a keyframe dialog that allows me to add and delete new keyframes to manage the animation aspects of my paragraph. I can also smooth the keyframe interpolation, which eases the animation in and out in a more organic way. When we create new keyframes, these are also shown in the Timeline window as a blue dot. The Timeline window is where we can arrange our paragraphs in time, just as you place media clips on your editor timeline. Each paragraph can have its own timeline track, or you can place paragraphs sequentially on the same track. And each paragraph can have its own effects and transitions that can start and finish at different times. Now we'll be covering all of these features and more in another tutorial, so for now I'm going to turn keyframing off. Let's move on to the style page. On this page we define how our paragraph is going to look, not in terms of size or position, but in terms of colour, texture and other artistic attributes. Here we can add 2D and 3D layers to our style. 2D layers can be shadows, outlines, or faces, while 3D layers can be either outlines or faces. Two D is great for blurred organic looks and for applying effects to a layer while 3D is the choice if you want crisp text. You can mix and match 2D and 3D layers and you can have as many of them as you like for each style. Don't forget that styles can also be applied to individual characters and words and you can even have a different style for every letter in your paragraph. When you create a new paragraph by default it has a simple style already set up for you. We're going to take a good look at how you work with styles in a later tutorial. Moving on to the effects page and, ah, there's nothing here. 
Well, that's because effects have to be added from the library. Once you've added an effect, it will then show up as a collapsible section in the effects page and you can edit the parameters at will. Same goes for transitions. Effects and transitions are also shown on the timeline and you can have as many as you like for each paragraph. Another very cool feature of Titler is that it will also let you use any existing new blue blends or effects packages that you already have installed. We'll be looking at effects and transitions, you guessed it, in a later tutorial. Let's finish up this tour of the Titler interface by briefly looking at the library. And this is where I might get a little bit girly and giggly. The library contains hundreds of style presets and project templates that you can use right out of the box and then tweak to your heart's delight. A style preset contains one or more 2D or 3D layers, whereas a template is in fact a title of project in its own right that can be applied to individual paragraphs, complete with transitions, animations and effects. Now these are great jumping off points for you to use as the basis for your own projects and they're also a great way to explore how things work in Titler. As I mentioned before, the library is also where you can choose and apply effects and transitions. You'll also find some other cool toys like shapes that you can use in your titles as separators, background blocks, whatever you like. So there you go. We've had a reasonably thorough tour of the Titler interface and hopefully that will be enough to get you up and running and exploring for yourself just what the Titler can do. Once you're comfortable with the basics, be sure to check out the rest of the Titler tutorials to learn more about using presets, style editing, effects, animations, transitions, keyframing and much more. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. This is Ian Stark saying thanks for watching and I look forward to having the pleasure of your company again soon.